Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold and with me is my friend Regine, who we talked to last time and heard a beautiful story what God did when this family decided to leave Germany and move to Laos to share their faith, to just simply work in their own, their own ways. But that wasn't the end of God's mission work and that's what we want to continue in today. So Regine, as yeah. your work began to wrap up in Laos, what was God's next call upon your life? Yeah, the next call happened still in Laos. And actually I was called to a remote village to help out in a case of a young baby. Mm. It was a four months old baby who was very sick. And so uh, we tried to do many things, but you could see the uh, it was probably going to die. And so as a team, we tried many things to help out. And then we contacted doctors in the capital and they told us, oh, this is a disease we can easily operate. It should have been done already. And this the information hasn't been given to the parents because we're, they were absolutely poor. So they were just sent home and nobody informed them about anything about their human mm. rights. And so we ha I was there, I had to witness how the baby died oh. and how the family broke down and mm. how the, we held the baby and how the ho half of the village was falling out on top of that baby and I saw all what took place and I went home and I, I got in serious prayer and I asked God, God, uh, I need to do more mm -hmm. than just housework. What shall I do? And so it didn't uh, take long and God pointed me to work with children at risk. Mm -hmm. And so later on we moved to Thailand where we are right now. And now we are located in the northern part near to, to Myanmar. And we are serving, uh, my family and I, we serve along the border uh, to Myanmar and we serve to refugees in the refugee camps. I've been yes. to some of those refugee yeah. camps along the border and seen yes. the people living in just little tiny shacks behind barbed wire, no right. freedom, at, at least safety, right. but wondering about their future. So right. tell me more. Yes, the current situation is kind of devastating because uh, nobody knows what will happen next. Mm -hmm. So many are not allowed to uh, resettle, to go mm -hmm. to America, Australia or somewhere. And these infrastructures in Myanmar are not ready to welcome everyone mm -hmm. back. And Thailand actually doesn't want uh, the refugees mm -hmm. from Myanmar. And so there's a lot happening inside of the camps. So families are in uh, a lot of distress and children experience abuse, uh, mm -hmm. the rape number is going up and oh, there's okay. murder happening, suicide numbers are going up and now we have Christian women who try to start ministries wow. to reach out to these families. So Christians within, among themselves, this um, is primarily right. Korean refugees, right? Among the tribe Most, of Korean? Mostly, okay. right. And so this is one scenario and then we have the migrant communities yes. outside of the refugee camps. And so you can say they are the least cared for wow. because uh, there are not many NGOs really looking after them. And so they are the children go to migrant learning centers. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, uh, many funds supporting those about 66 schools were withdrawn and oh, the funds really? are in going straight into Myanmar. And so many migrant learning centers cannot keep up. Wow. And so we recently had about five to 6,000 children without education on the streets. Mm, five to six thousand right. children just on the streets with just no school, with no, no good school. place to stay. That's true. And what usually happens, wow. parents come along, they bring their children and then the parents go back to Myanmar mm -hmm. or they go to Singapore, Malaysia for other mm. work opportunities. They leave the children in boarding houses or in kind of not good type of mm -hmm. orphanages. And sometimes the children are just left by themselves, mm. so they are abandoned. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah. what are you doing particularly to try yes. to help? Yes. So our local churches are actually quite active. They set up two schools, first of all, wow. in different areas. And they have uh, local national teams of teachers uh, trying to help. 
but mm -hmm. still the the level of knowledge is very low. So mm -hmm. there is a, a low level of knowledge about education and especially about children at risk and what mm -hmm. it means to be at risk. So we lack a lot of uh, input. How can we protect children? Mm -hmm for example. Mm. So this is one uh, thing what the church is doing and the church is realizing we need more uh, child caretakers mm. and we have to um, yeah, professionalize our church members wow. in order to respond to the situation. Wow. Wow. So that's what we do right now. We set up trainings and uh, so we try to uh, train very well educated uh, child caretakers who are able to understand the full picture how what is what is important mm -hmm. in child development and what uh, is the whole situation uh, about wow wow it's a huge field and i can just yes, feel your yes. love for the children your love yes. for these people that are in trouble this yes. is really an awesome example of what one church member can do to help encourage other church members and then together yes. as a team they can pray and be a powerful influence right. for a desperate need and, and great problems. Right. Uh, it reminds me a lot of what's happening in Europe, how yes. the church is seeking to respond exactly. to this massive wave of about a million refugees yes. into Europe over 2015. And I just read that there's a camp with like 90,000 unaccompanied children yes. that are also at great risk of, right. of rape, of, of slavery, of yes. abuse in different forms. Right. Um, so right. it is exciting that any individual yes. who God puts it on their heart mm -hmm. can go to a place like that and begin to find ways to care one person at a time. That's Very beautiful. True. Any last thoughts yes. for people who are listening and saying, I'd like to do something like that? Yes. So we actually uh, would appreciate to have uh, senior professionals coming over mm -hmm. and to help us to build up social services oh, wow. and also uh, young volunteers or students who study social work. Those Maybe. people are the people we need and we you know we need to to do campaigns there's a lot what can be done and so when you come uh, and you are willing to bring all your heart and you have a little experience mm -hmm. and you are a little bit type of uh, self sufficient person uh, and you are able to work without an organization in mm -hmm. your back you are the right person to come and help wow. Okay, so if they wanted to contact you, yes. would that be okay? Yes, Where, how would they contact you? Fine, wonderful. What yes. would be the contacts? So our, oh, the best you can do, uh, you could either contact ASAP mm -hmm. or you could contact also ADRA Thailand and they will channel that through to me then. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Regine, for sharing your so passion, welcome. which is Jesus' passion to care for those who are in trouble. Appreciate it very much. Thank so you. if you'd like to get involved more in reaching out to refugees over across the ocean somewhere, or even with those who have come here to the United States or other countries, contact us at asapministries.org. And you know, God is going to finish it. He is behind this great migration so that he can bring people to where they are able to find love and care and meet Jesus himself. Thank you. Together, let's reach the world ASAP.